13 News Now begins with breaking news. That breaking news tonight is in Portsmouth, where two people are recovering after being shot just a couple hours ago. Police tell us one of them was shot on Avondale Road around 2.30. Then moments later, we're told another man walked into the hospital with a gunshot wound. Police think that both shootings here are connected. Both men, we can tell you, are expected to be okay. Also breaking tonight for the second time in less than 24 hours, someone has died after being hit by a train. This time, police say 28-year-old Shante Smith was killed when she was crossing the tracks in James City County as an Amtrak train came barreling through. Now this happened around noon on Richmond Road. Witness told police the woman had headphones on while she was crossing the tracks when she was hit. Spokesperson for Amtrak tells us the train was heading from Boston to Newport U News. 63 people are on board and none of them was hurt. We're told Amtrak is working with police on this investigation. And that train crash comes less than a day after a man was hit and killed by a freight train in Williamsburg. Police tell us he was hit between York Street and Penniman Road around 2.30 yesterday. We're told he died at Riverside Regional Medical Center in Newport News around 9 o'clock last night. Police haven't released his name. Firefighters are fired up after state lawmakers tabled some bills that would have improved coverage if they get cancer. The Newport News Firefighters Association isn't happy about it. They tweeted, thanks for nothing, Senate. We protect everyone and anyone in the state without bias, yet you're, you turn your backs on us time and time again. 13 News Now reporter Nico Clemens learned more about the bills that were tabled and spoke to the Fire Association. He's live tonight in Newport News. Nico. Yeah, firefighters are expressing their disappointment and frustration tonight, Janet. Now, I spoke to the president of the Newport News Firefighters Association. He says that he personally has been fighting for years to get better coverage if, in fact, a firefighter does get cancer. You see what they did? Uh, really uh, hit us hard. Firefighters across the state are voicing their concerns, including here in Hampton Roads. Uh, it's so frustrating. That's because a House subcommittee tabled a bill that would allow certain cancers to be covered by workmen's compensation for firefighters. The bill, 1245, adds cancers of the colon, brain, or testes to the list of cancers that would be covered when firefighters develop the cancer. It hurt this year because uh, we had promises from the politicians up there that uh, it was going to be a bipartisan uh, support and we won't get it passed. Connie Lewis is the president of the Newport News Firefighters Association. He believes lawmakers are putting politics before the health and well-being of firefighters everywhere. We continue to come to fires. Uh, when you call, we show up. You know, we're just asking that the uh, you know, workers' comp and the state house look out for us. Earlier this week, the Senate postponed a decision on two similar bills until 2019. On the Newport News Firefighters Association website, it reads, thanks for nothing and broken promises to all the senators who voted no. We're not asking for a pay raise, not asking for vacation. We're just asking for a benefit to uh, help our members and their families, you know, after, you know, such a bad illness happens. And I did reach out to Senator Tommy Norman's office. He was one of several lawmakers who voted to continue those two other bills until 2019. I have not heard back from anyone. And at six, Lewis tells me how this is a huge blow for one Newport News firefighter. Live in Newport News, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. It's been a beautiful end to the work week today. Take a look at the temperatures right now in the 50s with plenty of sunshine, but we're in for some changes this weekend. And Jeff is in now with a look at what those changes will be. Yeah, changes in terms of the sky conditions, in terms of the precipitation, in terms of the temperature, in terms of everything, basically. Right now, there is nothing out there, at least locally or even regionally for that matter. We will be tracking a couple of showers later coming up out of North Carolina, but don't worry, no uh, effect at all on your evening plans. As you can see right now, it is 47, but we just showed you that wider view, and inland areas are above 50 still, all because of the wind off the water. That keeps it cooler, again, in areas right near the water because the water temperature is really chilly still this time of year. In terms of what is coming ahead, well, first of all, you can really get an idea of the changes just by looking even at the next six hours. See how we drop down here from the upper 40s down into the mid 40s, then the lower 40s, and then we hold steady. That is an indication that the air is starting to come in out of the south and a warmer air at that, a warmer air mass. So as you can see, 
generally clear through the evening and into the overnight. And then we're going to start to see those changes. Not a washout at all this weekend. In fact, we have lowered the rain chances, but you still will need the rain gear in spots from time to time. Warmer Saturday, very warm on Sunday. We'll have the details coming up. All right, Jeff, thank you. Right now, Virginia Beach Police are warning people, check your bank account and credit card statements. That's because someone reported a skimming device at a popular convenience store. 13 News Now reporter Megan Perrier is live in the studio now with more. Megan. Dan at Virginia Beach Police say you should be always on the safe side. Monitoring transactions, running credit instead of debit, and even going inside to pay are the best tips they have. You can never be too careful. My card was compromised. Melanie Moreno is a regular at the Red Barn gas station in Pungo. That's unnerving because I actually purposely drive to the Red Barn because I'm trying to support local business. A customer told the business they believe there was a skimmer on the gas pump and owners went to police. Skimming is when a device is put in a gas dispenser to capture your credit or debit information. And that's scary to think here in Virginia, Hampton Roads, that we have it. That's Meg Rask, and she's sick of people stealing. That's terrible. That's my money I saved. I mean, you're taking people's life savings, their money they're using for something. I mean, that just it upsets me and then it also makes me mad. Police say the skimmer was installed between January 1st and February 6th, meaning it could have been stealing information for more than a month. So it goes through a whole fraud team and they have to verify that it wasn't you because so many purchases are made on Amazon and are made online. With nearly 40 million Americans fueling up each day, pumps have quickly become a target for thieves to steal your information and the outcome might be quicker than you expect. We didn't even realize it was happening. It was happening so quick. And I had Amazon call me asking me about how to deliver this product that I never ordered. It was really fast. If you have any information that might help police, call the crime line at 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. On 13 News Now at 6, I'll have some tips from police on how you can detect these skimmers. In the studio, Megan Perrier, 13 News Now. Right now, police in James City County are asking for your help. Take a look at this surveillance video they just released. You can see someone trying to get into parked cars. Officers say this person stole from several unlocked cars in Michelle's Point, Rolling Woods, and Whitehall. It happened overnight Sunday. Police say they're hoping you recognize the suspect, and if you do, call the crime line at 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. Tonight, hundreds of men and women are heading to Europe and the Middle East for a six-month deployment on the USS Oak Hill. The sailors have been preparing for about two years for this deployment, but that doesn't make leaving their families any easier, especially for a new wife or a new dad and his wife. And we ran into them this morning before the ship left. I'm very proud of my husband. He's the best. Ben, I cry. <laughs> The USS Oak Hill just returned to Norfolk in October after two months helping with hurricane relief efforts in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Group of specialists from Virginia will head to the U.S. Virgin Islands this weekend to help with recovery efforts after Hurricanes Maria and Irma. Some of the 12 environmental health specialists are from Chesapeake. They'll be heading to St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix. They'll be working with local officials to inspect restaurants and help fix sanitation problems. The group will be in the Virgin Islands until the end of the month. New information tonight about the flu epidemic, which the CDC now says is just as severe as the swine flu pandemic from 2009. The CDC releases updated weekly flu map. You see the virus is still widespread in 48 states. Oregon began reporting flu activity as regional last week and still is. And the virus is becoming more common in Hawaii, where it's up from local to regional. And the CDC says the virus killed 10 more children in the last week, bringing the total number up to 63 so far this season. The flu is having a devastating effect on people who get sick, even if they survive. A 10 year old girl is now suffering from a collapsed lung and pneumonia after getting the flu. She went to school with no problem and her school nurse has sent her home with 102 fever. She is recovering right now. Pediatricians are warning parents to monitor children for symptoms like dehydration, crankiness, a fever with a rash or a fever that's gone away and come back. 
Tonight, a lawmaker at the forefront of the Me Too movement in California is facing her own accusations of sexual misconduct. And the fashion company Guess is investigating allegations against its co-founder. ABC's Marcia Gonzalez is following these latest developments. Kate Upton's rise to stardom. What's going on? As an actress and supermodel started with this campaign for Guess. It was then when she was 18 years old, she says the company's co-founder, Paul Marciano, sexually harassed and assaulted her, telling Time Magazine that at a lingerie shoot, Marciano forcibly grabbed my breasts and started feeling them. After I pushed him away, he said, I'm making sure they're real. Then she told the magazine he grabbed the back of my head so I could not move and started kissing my face and my neck. Upton claims it's not the only time he harassed and insulted her. And I had to go through this moment where I was like, that's not my fault. That's his fault. A photographer who worked with Upton on some of the guest shoots corroborated her account to ABC News and says he stands with her. But Marciano denies her claim, saying he never touched her inappropriately, adding, I fully support the Me Too movement. At the same time, I will not allow others to defame me and tarnish my reputation. Also defending against sexual misconduct allegations, this California legislator. We should not have to be on your shoulders to make this change. State Assemblywoman Christina Garcia, known for her fierce advocacy on women's issues, including the Me Too movement, now accused of groping a man at a 2014 softball game. Garcia writing in a statement, I am certain I did not engage in the behavior I'm accused of. However, as I've said before, any claims about sexual harassment must be taken seriously. And she is now taking an unpaid leave of absence, saying she welcomes a full investigation. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles.